the Holy Spirit works with the mind with, with what it believes. Uh, just like when you go into a psychotherapist, you know, we were talking the other day about you usually don't go in and say, you know, I've got this deep unconscious guilt that I separated from God and uh, I'd like you to help me uh, understand that I'm whole and complete with God. Usually in most interactions with psychotherapists, it's the psychotherapist says, tell me about your life. And you start off with practical examples of what's going on and then the spirit can come into those relationships if that's really the goal and, and take it step by step. So, uh, basically, instead of like a top-down approach, Jesus emphasizes a bottom-up approach, meaning that it, it, the Holy Spirit and Jesus have to work in very practical means with what the mind believes. And so it can seem to involve a, a sense of uh, first perceiving it as being something on the screen of the world and then reeling it back into the mind and realizing, okay, this is a, a, an attack thought, a grievance that I'm working with that I really need to quit hiding and protecting and actually hand over to the Holy Spirit. And then of course the Holy Spirit is already gone by the time it gets back to the Holy Spirit because there's, there's no uh, step in that in the sense that it's already sh shown away. So it goes, for most people, it goes through a process of, of uncovering and exposing and releasing. It's just the way that it seems to go. There are these, like with Eckhart Tolle on the park bench, and there are quite a lot of experiences throughout history where people like have a flash, like Gary was saying, maybe like it's their last, last lifetime, there's not much there, and then flesh. It's just this recognition, not this uh, big long process. But just like when a child learns how to ride a bike, it can be very awkward at the beginning. But once they gain a little bit of sense of balance and success, then it's more of a very sensitized sense of mind watching and, and the slightest bit of annoyance or irritation or whatever is like a, is a great alert for a forgiveness lesson. You become more sensitized to it. So, and that's the way it went for me. It started off with me going through, you know, very much looking at things in a very personal way. Uh, that's how the ego is, and then the more subtle it got, it got more general and uh, non-specific. Uh, just feeling like uh, I was dying, which was the ego going, oh hell. And then as you go deeper and deeper, you know, then you have to face that as well. It still comes down to, to starting to realize that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. There's no hierarchy in illusions, and so all the branches of the tree, so to speak, really all are one trunk. But they don't seem like one trunk at the beginning. They seem like many specific branches. And then, uh, let's see, what was your refreshment in your second question? The belief that creates abuse. Oh, uh, the belief that creates abuse yeah. Yeah, in our lives. Well, I was saying earlier today, too, that that, that belief in abuse is, is really what the ego is. It's the belief that there's something that is outside of your mind that can harm you or hurt you. And of course it plays out in terms of the perception of a body, as if there are things that are outside the body or even inside the body, like uh, germs or cancer or something like that. But the Course teaches us the body is outside you, but it seems to surround you, you know, shutting you off from others. And basically in Another part of the Course, Jesus says, there is nothing outside of you. Well, let's put those two quotes together. The body is outside of you, and there is nothing outside of you. Is what? Has he made a contradiction there? Is Jesus contradicting himself? No, the body is nothing. <laughs> and so, it's a recognition in the end that, that the idea of abuse is, is unreal. It's literally shown to be unreal. Now, how does that play out in terms of, of your perception of the world? What, what does it take for there to be abuse? It takes duality. You've got to have an abuser and an abusee, you know, so to speak. You've got to have one who's doing it and one who's getting done to. And that's the basic split in consciousness that the ego makes up. It takes basically this whole cosmos, which is just like a tapestry uh, that the Holy Spirit handled in one instant. You know, simultaneously when the, the beliefs seem to arise, the Holy Spirit 
answered it in an instant. And, and basically that's the unified field to talk about in quantum physics, uh, the healed, healed perception, the happy dream. It's all completely unified. It's all simultaneous as well. There's no linearity to it. But the ego split the cosmos up into separate parts. It fragmented everything as if it was separate. And he even goes into that in the workbook and says, you know, you believe that something exists as whole in and of itself. You know, you give it a name, you delineate it, you carve it out of reality. And, and that's the very process of, of projection, of, of making something out of nothing, really when it's all unified, just taking the parts out of the whole. And how that plays out is, for most people in a practical way, there are these human beings that seem to actually do something to each other. And the one that's on the end of the, the wicked evil doer is the, the one that's the, the, the victimizer. And the one that gets done to is labeled by the ego, the victim. And when you have this pr process of forgiveness, where you actually can allow the miracle to become your choice, then suddenly that duality is no longer there. And so I know we've talked about it in our groups in many ways, uh, you know, in terms of uh, people doing that, in terms of the environment, and, and it plays out in many different ways. It's just one little tweak in the mind that sees that, that the duality isn't real, that it's all unified. So that's how it uh, gets healed. <laughs>